Hi everyone, my name is Munan and I am a technical consultant here at Glidefast. Today I will go over the Service Operations Workspace which is one of the newest features offered by the ServiceNow Tokyo release. A configurable workspace that provides a unified experience for multiple IT service management and IT operations management workflows. So let's start exploring. Starting right here on the landing page for your Tier 1 and Tier 2 agents. Here, by ServiceNow definition, a Tier 1 agent is an ITIL user who belongs to a service desk group and a Tier 2 agent is an ITIL user who does not belong to a service desk group. The workspace is tailored to provide an overview of outages, service announcements, and assignments to efficiently prioritize the work. Tier 1 agents can view and manage their performance and learning tasks assigned by their manager. The overviews, as you can see shows me incidents assigned to me broken down by state, by SLAs and incidents that are unassigned. If I scroll through, I also have catalog tasks assigned to me. I can click view all to see the incidents listed below either in a grid or a list view. I could also open this in a new tab if it's more convenient. The upcoming tab shows me that I have three incidents with breached SLAs today and I also have five tasks which are overdue. Let's see what these five tasks are. We also have a section for tomorrow which would basically show me anything that is due the next day. Quick links can be configured for any internal or external web page. All you need is the URL for your target page. It could be knowledge bases or the service portal or any external application. The recently viewed section shows you your recently visited records or in our case the service operations workspace. Agents get to manage their incidents effectively with the contextual information and targeted actions. Let's open an incident here. We have our overview section that shows us the incident summary, its impact, and if there are any CIs affected by the incident. Moving to the details tab shows us the more native incident view that agent would usually see. And the related records section tab shows us SLAs, affected CIs, impact services, or any child incidents. The Compose tab here gives us the option to communicate with the end user by adding comments as well as adding private work notes. Now we have these small buttons on the right hand side which may come up as really useful throughout the incident lifecycle. We have the record information selected which as of right now shows us the caller information as well the incident assignee. Down below, we have Agent Assist that shows a list of knowledge articles which might be helpful for the agent to resolve the incident. Notice this button over here. It lets you change your search resource from knowledge article to anything from this list. So I could look up, for example, another incident that may be similar or outages that might have caused this incident. Next we have the newest, Experts on Call feature. Agents can reach out to Experts on Call for high priority tasks. Next we have the Attachments tab where you could attach any documents or photos to the incident. Lastly, the template tab which can be used to populate any fields on the incident based on any available templates. Up here, we have our save button. We also have the option to directly create a change request from this incident. Or you could use this down arrow here to either create an incident task, an outage, problem or a request as well. Next we have the Resolve button. And then we also have this button with three dots which provides more options. We could compose emails on the fly, copy this existing incident or report a knowledge gap. So if this is out of my expertise I could report a knowledge gap. On the next section here we have our lists which may look familiar. It has a similar look and feel to what we are used of having on the agent workspace. You could also filter out and create your own lists as well. Similar to bookmarks on the native UI. If you have agent chat configured, you could use the service operations workspace to work on incoming chat requests as well. All of this right within from a single workspace. That is it for today. This was a brief overview of the service operations workspace. One thing to note is that it is highly configurable. 
starting right from the installation to updating bits of the landing page or this upcoming section and more. Thank you for watching.